I picked this Cosman 1077 up a few weeks ago. Um, got it second hand, very cheap. And it came with uh, that gun bag, which is a bit long. So I, um, I chopped it down and modified it to make a little carbine um, case. And it came with a scope and it came with loads of extras. So I, it was such a good deal, I just, I couldn't say no. Um, yeah, 1077s, it's a um, rotary, 12 shot, multi shot, um, semi-automatic CO2 rifle. Not the most powerful in the world, but I'll explain it in a minute why. Um, it's very short, only like three foot, 36 inches long. And I found that um, for me, um, the stock was too short. So I put a, uh, um, a rubber extension pad on there and just to hide the join, I didn't know what to use really, but I had some camo tape, so I just camo tape the end of the stock and now that shoulders really, really nicely. It's only got a cheap 4x32 SMK scope on it, um, but you know, it's alright, it does the job and uh, scope mounts go straight onto 11mm uh, dovetail that's already uh, you know, on the rifle stock. Um, it's synthetic, but it's really plastic, it's not really synthetic, but it feels synthetic, um, the actual stock. So it's pretty good. Um, it does come with a uh, true glow um, fiber optic sight on the front and uh, bladed rear sight for adjustable for windage and elevation. Uh, it just takes one single um, 88 gram CO2 capsule. Um, you just screw it in there. Um, make sure you use a bit of pelly gun oil always whenever you're sort of uh, loading your CO2 and you're ready to, to shoot. Um, I'll show you the, the magazine, it's very clever. It's a bit like a, uh, a Ruger 1022 sort of styling um, and the magazine's a little bit similar to that as well. And it's, it's a really sort of uh, nifty, clever design. And it works well, it doesn't seal that great and that's why the power's low. Um, but what do you expect for a cheap um, sort of uh, multi-shot such as this? Um, and so many products are really cheap. Extra uh, rotary magazines, 12 shot magazines. I think that was seven pound for three, so that's really cheap. Um, also got another uh, mag hold or, or you know magazine clip. Um, that was the same price, seven pound for a whole um, sort of Cosman uh, magazine clip. So you know parts are really cheap. Um, CO2. Uh, I mean, because it's single um, powerlet. You're not going to, you know, some of these um, are sort of like rifles that are, are two CO2s, so you tend to eat them up a lot. But you get about 30 shots per CO2 powerlet. Um, but, you know, it's a bit of fun. The pellets are cheap anyway. Um, I'll show you how I seat these pellets in these little mags, because they can get, um, you can get some misses if they're not seated properly, if you've got the skirts proud um, of the magazine. But that's an easy fix. Um, it's not pellet fussy. I'm using uh, JSB exacts and that what are they they were 8.4 grain and on the chronograph it was pushing out just over 550 between 550 and 558 foot, uh, feet per second and with these pellets that's uh, just under six foot pounds uh, which you know it's not the most powerful rifle in the world but it is a plinker it's more than enough uh, for the job uh, at task and um, yeah I'm happy with it, it shoots lovely well, I'll set some uh, some cans up and we'll do some um, shooting. Um, oh, and before that, I'll, I'll set the camera up and I'll, and I'll just show you that magazine and how you sort of load and, and unload it. Um, I'll also set up a, a paper target um, over there somewhere and you can see what the group's like. Um, that should be about 15 yards um, and targets over in that corner, um, roughly the same. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a great, fun rifle. It's an entry-level rifle. You know, it's, it's, it's a youth uh, rifle for this size, but, you know, big kids like me uh, can still enjoy them. Yes, yeah, so the magazine, you just basically pull it out like that. And pull this little clip back. Come straight out. Pop one in. Lock it in place, and as the uh, trigger pulls, it just rotates for the next one. And that's part of the reason why it's not very powerful, because as you pull the um, trigger, which is about uh, an eight pound trigger pull, it's actually um, single action, and it's pulling the rotary magazine round to the next pellet, 
um, and then it will let off and hit the hammer and shoot. So that's why it's heavy, the trigger, but it's, it's a big fat bladed, um, bladed trigger. So, you know, I don't find it that much of a, a pull really. Um, and inside, you can actually see um, there is not a great seal between the rotary pellet uh, magazine and uh, where the CO2 sort of discharges to uh, shoot it. And you do find a, um, a little bit of gas will escape here um, when the magazine is, because it's not making a, a really tight seal. You know, if it was a single shot bolt action, then obviously you'll have rubber seals, O-rings, it will, you know, seal it into the barrel before the uh, CO2 is released. But the idea of this is that it's um, semi-automatic, shoots as fast as you can pull the trigger, um, and just means you're gonna compromise and lose a bit of gas. But, you know, just under six foot pounds, um, that's, that's fine for sort of plinking. It's not for, you know, hunting. It ain't the target rifle. It's just a bit of fun in the back garden. Another little tip, if you don't seat the pellets um, correctly in the rotary magazines, then you might get a few won't actually shoot. They'll be stuck. Um, as you can see, the one in the front, I haven't seated them properly. And a few of them are gonna catch on the skirt. These have all been seated correctly. It's very simple, what you need to do is get yourself a little stick and match stick or a little cocktail stick and just push them back, just seat them in so the skirts are inside each uh, cylinder, if you like, of the rotary mag. So it didn't take very long, there's another one then, this one. And just make sure with your finger on the other side there's no pellets sticking out the other side and you'll find that you won't get any any misfires or pellets stuck in the magazine by doing it that way That's what it's made for. Not bad, CO2. That's my quick review of the uh, Crossman 1077. Um, like I said, I got it second hand, I got a good deal on it. Would I buy it brand new? They retail at £109-ish UK pounds. Um, yeah, I definitely would. Um, I paid uh, quite a bit less than that, <laughs> and I got all the accessories with it, so it is a deal I couldn't turn up. Um, it's a junior rifle, but um, the only downside for an adult is the stock length, but I've overcome that with a, uh, you know, uh, an extension on the back. Uh, it's a rubber one, didn't fit perfectly, it was slipping on and off, so I just camo taped it up just to keep it in place. Um, it's not going to win any beauty competitions, but um, no, I think it's quite a smart little rifle. Um, would I put a bigger scope on it? No, definitely not. Would I take it off and do open sights? Um, yeah, probably, but uh, uh, that's quite a, a nice pointable little scope and it is, it's perfect for sort of 15 to 20 yards. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the scope on there. It's not clipped back at all, there's no recoil, CO2. Um, uh, trigger's heavy, we know that, because rotating the magazines. 
but um, I can live with that. It's nice and wide. And uh, once it's rotated, you can feel the click, and then you know that the next bit of the trigger is going to be uh, releasing the hammer. Um, I have noticed actually, because I normally hold uh, rifles sort of uh, like, almost like a tactical hold over the trigger. Um, if you hold this um, in your um, left hand of your right hand shooter, you actually feel it move a little bit, a little bit of rotation um, when the, the trigger is, is pulling the mag round. So I've been holding it forward um, rather than holding it actually on the magazine, just because I, I, I do want to sort of. Uh, yeah, I just want it sort of to rotate without me sort of um, interfering with that at all. So yeah, I'll hold it further forward. Um, but that's, that's no biggie. It's nothing really. Um, it's a cheap plinker. With regards to sort of uh, power, like I say, it's just under six foot pounds. Um, it does shoot through sort of like soup bean tins. Um, doesn't come out the other side. There's the dent. But I think that's quite good because if you're plinking in the garden, at least you don't got to worry about ricochets. It's going to absorb the impact. Um, but not come out the other side. So I think this is a 10 out of 10 for back garden plinking. Power's just right for that purpose. Um, it's great fun being uh, semi-auto. Obviously, the faster you pull that trigger, uh, the colder it's gonna run and the less accurate it's gonna be. So if you sort of, uh, you know, pace your shots, it'll probably be more accurate, but that's, that's not really what this is about. Um, little top tip I forgot to mention is uh, sun's gone around the corner a bit now I normally keep my CO2 um, in the sun and then that way they're nice and hot and warm uh, for when you you pop them in the in the rifle um, and as always uh, warm CO2 is going to perform much better uh, than cold so I hope you like the video um, I'm gonna have a little play now without having to film it I'll enjoy that more I think see you later